continuing further, we've been talking in, in, in theory a bit uh, about um, why you need the blogs and such. And we'll be talking then in detail how to write them, of course, and, and things to avoid and things to, to include. Um, but what I want to do is mention here on the notes, and I'll provide you these notes in a moment. I'm going to put them into our network folder, and I'll show you where the network folder is at. But uh, a couple of notes here. This is, this is a not inclusive list at all of possible kinds of blog posts. So a few, a, a short list, a few types of blog posts. So I might use the term blog, I might use the term blog post. The blog is the whole thing itself. I confused the schedule. Can I still make it? Yes, go ahead and have a second. Thank you. A, type, yes, thank you. A, a few types of blog posts. So the blog itself is the whole, the whole site itself. And then a blog post is one particular entry into your blog. So we can write that first, actually. Blog is the whole, uh, the whole site, basically. And the blog post, one entry. I might use them interchangeably. Technically, there is a difference. I'll try to be consistent in saying your post for one particular entry and your blog for the whole thing. So over at the Texcoco site, when you click on blog, that's the blog, that's the whole blog site. And when I clicked on that one post or article, maybe we can call them like that also, article, one particular post is one particular entry or article, and the whole thing is a blog. So when we talk about a few different types of blog posts, well, as I said earlier, um, blog about your business and tangential material. So there's that Mexican food restaurant example that I showed you. And in there, its blog posts are about the food. That's very direct. These are the dishes that are sold. Tangential, a tangent is something on the side. Um, tangential is we got rated on Zagat. Look at this celebrity that came in. Um, we're part of the 5120 the 50, child, um, child Health Initiative. So things on the side that relate to the business. So tangential content is content that relates to your main business. And at the beginning, you might not quite know, well, what is, what is too tangential? We'll, we'll talk about that when we brainstorm and such. But, here, a few types of blog posts. This is not an exhaustive list at all. There's uh, many answers for this, but we'll see some kinds of blog posts. One of the one of the popular ones is a top X. So that's top five this, top ten that, top twelve whatever, just X. We'll, we'll just say top ten something. A top ten post. We could write, for example, for this restaurant, the top five beverages. So we can put together a blog post about the number one sold beverage, sangria, let's say, number two, pulque, number three, whatever. And we write this blog post uh, about that particular thing. And the top number really doesn't matter. The thing is that people like to read top five, top three, top twelve, top whatever. So writing the top something posts. I'll talk about what's a good length of a blog post. That's part of our checklist and such. We'll get to that later. But in theory, top 10, top 12, top whatever. We can have how-to or tutorial. A tutorial post. Let's say you've got, well, I'll show you a real example. Uh, as I said, my company, we do photography. And so we have some good photographic gear to take product photos and such. I also like to do photography on the side. Um, so I, I bought a light tent or a light box, which is basically a big cube that a person can stand inside of that has white sides, and then you can control the light very well to get really nice portraits. Well, this cube opens up to be, you know, six feet by six feet cubed. 
a big six feet cube, but it actually folds down this big. So there's a trick to it, to fold it to be this small from six feet. I, I opened up the cube, it pops open because there's springs, it pops open and okay, great, time to put it away. I'm trying to put it away and I can't fold it up. I went to the manufacturer's website and they had a blog post there, how to fold the light cube and the video. So tutorials how-to posts are very useful, especially for some product of yours that requires some instruction or some guidance. So let's say I'm a realtor. I could think about giving away something. Um, many times on a website, whatever our business is, a good tactic is to give something away, something for free. A free mortgage calculator, a free you know, if you're a nutritionist, a free um, little, uh, you know, diet tracking app. Because some people are going to use that diet tracking app and they'll be happy with it and great, they'll never call you. But some people will, will use that diet tracking app and say, well, this is too hard, let me call a professional, let me hire a professional. Maybe they will use that diet tracking app but still call you because they need to go to the next level in their health. So freebies a how-to, a tutorial, giving something away for free. Um, as, as detailed as you want to be to, to bait the hook to catch that fish. So tutorial types of posts. You can have informational. An informational post. The good example again is um, Texcoco's posts, Texcoco's blog about the food. You're getting informed about the traditional beverages. You're getting informed about what's sweet la coche. You're getting informed. Hopefully that is enticing you then to order. Um, probably after the class is over, it's time for lunch and everyone's going to head over to the restaurant. Tell them Victor sent you. Yes. I was just wondering, did they offer a little recipe um, you know, for people who want to make something uh, themselves how to make one of their dishes or... at the moment no but that could be something that we could do so good point these all of these types of posts could be added to just about any client we don't have any informational posts which could be you know a free recipe but I was just thinking how that would lead to some other site maybe in the social media that would have Recipes or maybe uh, the YouTube one. Yeah. But how to make, um... Definitely. We, we could write, in theory, we could write a post on giving a version of one of the drinks, put it out on the, on the blog, but then also share it on YouTube or Pinterest or whatever. And then those people on, on Twitter could, could find that and then give us traffic back to the website. So, yeah, all of this stuff can be shared on social media, and that's one of the things we will be covering because you don't want, your, you don't want just to have your only presence your website. You want to be on the other networks. Question? Can you use Google to share on social media? Mm -hmm. okay. The cool thing is that WordPress has that, has that built in. You just kind of have to activate it, but we'll definitely do it. So informational posts. Yes? So that would be informational slash educational? Exactly, okay. yeah. Informational, educational. You're informing, you're educating about your product, something tangential. In short, you're still just creating content to become an authority, um, timely, relevant, authoritative content. It goes back to those three over and over. Is my post timely, relevant, and authoritative? It's not timely because I haven't written anything in my blog in four months. It's not relevant because you know, it's not about any topic of my site or tangential. It's too tangential. tangential. And it's not authoritative because I haven't written enough. The opposite side is, it's timely because I've written it on my blog at least once a month. It's relevant because it's a, it's a how-to on one of my products. It's authoritative because I'm writing on a regular basis relevant content and I'm putting out this content to the world, social media, on the, on the search engines, etc. And I'm becoming an authority on cooking, Mexican cooking in San Diego. And again, this is not a full list. There's lots and lots that we can uh, that we can do. But here's another one: promotional. 
a promotional post, like some of the recent ones we've done on the on Texcoco. The point of the promotional blog, yes, it's an ego boost. Yes, it's tooting your own horn. But the purpose of that is we are promoting ourselves and also promoting the people. We're promoting Rachel Ray. We're promoting Andrew Zimmern. We're promoting Zagat. We're promoting them, which they in turn could give us more promotion back. So a a um, a real example of that would be we write a blog post, we mention some of these chefs, we tweet on Twitter and mention that blog post and mention that chef on Twitter. That chef also likes the ego boost and the free traffic, so they will retweet our tweet that was about them, and then our tweet will now be seen by his 1,000 followers. So promotional posts are sort of like a you know a feedback loop. A, a, a closed feedback loop in that we're promoting someone else, but then they're going to help us promote us. It comes back to us. How to actually do it, we'll, we'll talk about it, but promotional posts, um, that's that kind of um, post, and that's why it would be useful to get us back more promotion. Promotion or uh, fame uh, creates fame on, on, online. Activity creates activity. On, on social media and on your blog. And just one more that popped into my head, inspirational. Inspirational posts. Uh, these are the posts that could be sort of tied into other things, uh, how to and such, but inspirational. Um, relevant to your, uh, to your business, to your website, what kind of post can you write that inspires something, an emotion? and action, etc. So one of the inspirational ones we've got on Texcoco is uh, over there about the the child, uh, the children's health initiative. You know, we want to inspire. We're saying, well, we want to connect uh, with the community and we believe in um, healthy living and such. And so we're trying to inspire kids and families to eat healthy. So what's in it for them is that maybe they get that uh, they sign up for that initiative or they implement it and such and then maybe we get a share on Facebook or we get traffic from people searching on, on Google you know healthy kids initiative Mexican food something and then it gets traffic back to the site so there's five types of blog posts here we'll, we'll run into some more as we actually talk more detail but th those are some things to think about there blog post types to think about. Any questions so far? Well, like the one of the latest blog posts on Texcoco is about being rated on Zagat. So we are promoting that we've gotten rated on Zagat which then that could get us a retweet from Zagat or from other food bloggers or other relevant people or fans and so that uh, fame could breed more frame, fame. Another question? Yes. Um, just, I used to teach in a place called Snapchat and I do inspirational speeches and then also persuasive speeches mm -hmm. and so I'm wondering how you could have a persuasive post. How that would that be different from an inspirational post? Well, I suppose I would have to sort of inform myself a little bit more to kind of understand that also. Okay. Um, so when you're saying a pers persuasive kind of toast, they're trying to in get you to do something? Right, to persuade people. It's kind of like inspirational is eliciting emotion, whereas uh, in my opinion, persuasive would be to persuade people to take an action. More direct action? Mm -hmm. I feel that it's piggybacks a lot on inspirational, but maybe, yes, more on, a, on an emotional level or, or, or adding more example in your blog post and a call to action, a direct call to action on the post itself that says, if you'd like to help, click this, donate here. Maybe that's how you make it more per persuasive because there's the actual action on the blog post. Mm -hmm. Whereas inspirational, it just inspires you, but it doesn't really say, don't forget to donate to UNICEF. Right. You know, persuasive would then be throughout the blog post itself, or at the end, somewhere it says, you know, they need help, click here. Thank you.
That could be a function too. It really is up to you what your function, what your purpose of your blog, or your whole site is. The purpose of this Mexican food uh, blog uh, is hopefully to get you hungry, to come to the restaurant, or to click on that order now. The purpose of the blog of my company is to let you know we know what we're talking about. Why not hire us? The purpose of Elsa's jewelry blog is to inspire you, but maybe to persuade you to buy the jewelry. So yes, the purpose of the blog could be anything you decide, including to sell um, products. Say it isn't Depends how you set up your site, because notice on Elsa's site, you can go to the blog, and there's and there's still going to be a cart in the corner. So let me go here to the blog. There's always going to be an ever-present cart at the top to remind you, and all the menu on top here, to remind you that you can always buy. So I'm in the blog section, the blog screen, or deep into a blog post, but there's always going to be shop at the top or cart here. So it's, that is just a function of how the site itself is set up. In Technically a blog is still a website, but if you're just thinking e-commerce, that can be separate. Yes, your site does not need e-commerce. It can just be the site itself, the blog itself. That can be separate. Comment over here? Yeah, I think if I'm understanding, I think so. Like, let's say, for example, you have a blog and you're trying to inform, do all these things, and create, become an authority on it. Let's see one of your posts, you post a product that you really love. And your purpose is trying to sell it. Maybe it's from your own product line, or maybe it's you're posting through to try to make money through what would be affiliate marketing, selling through someone else's site. But I think, like, one way you might do that, it might be as simple as a, you know, giving information on that product and click here buy or click here. And then if it's on your own site, maybe it might be on the product specific page. So which might have I, I, all, all the information and, and that kind of stuff. It's kind of a flow. I don't know if you're making any sense. Or if that, Was that on your on your idea? Well, I just got confused about why people go through so much trouble uh, doing having the web site and then adding a, a blog when there's so much more well, that's sort of like you can't, you, in a sense, you cannot separate that. A blog is a website, but if you're talking about an e commerce site, that's different. Uh, an e commerce site is a website, but an e commerce site does not have to be tied to a blog. So, a website and a blog are the same thing, basically even though you see that the blog is in its own little spot here, it's still part of this website. It's still a website. Um, I've got my own personal blog, bmcompass.com slash blog. That site itself, the whole thing is just a blog. I'm not selling anything. I'm just blogging about fun stuff. But that's a pure blog itself. And... Um, that, that the, the purpose of that um, is to increase traffic to your website, not mm -hmm. your blog. Is that what your you website, your blog, and your website are the same thing. I think you really, you really need to think about it in that term. It's the same side, two sides of the same coin. Your blog is your website. Basically. So Google is is, is rating you um, the traffic in both. Is that, is that that's how you get that reference at the top of the page? Yeah, with all of the content that you're creating and, and producing, that's going to give you the traffic to your site, which will then rank you higher on the search results. Another question here? Um, yeah, what was the theme? Um, what was the theme that uh, I don't remember it off the top of my head, but if you see me during the lab, I'll, I'll, I'll look it up and then I can tell you. And that's the great thing about WordPress. We can quickly change the theme the style of your site easily. It can look 
nice and clean like this. We can click a button and make it look like Texcoco. We can click another button and make it look like my site. So that's built into the functionality of WordPress to be able to change your theme pretty easily. I'll just have to look it up this particular one. And I don't know um, the question that she has. It sounds like do you the, the URL that you have for your website, right? That is your website, and without that, you can't have a blog, right? Because you can't have right. You can't access your blog without a website. That's how they get to your blog. That address up there, elsavalencia.com, is the website. And part of the website is slash blog, so the URL, the address. The blog is the website. It's on the website. And you see it there literally because that's their ad her address, elsavalencia.com, and the blog is part of it. So you need one, you need the blog to be connected to the site. So in a sense, it is the site. All right, so all that we've been talking about so far has been the, the concepts of blogs. But I've been focused on a little, focusing on a little bit on the larger blog platform, which is, uh, which is WordPress. The other big uh, blog platform is one called Tumblr. So let's check this out on your web browser. Let's go to tumblr.com. There's no e after l. It uses the it uses the modern <coughs> hip way of forgetting vowels in your website. So, tumblr.com, T-U-M-B-L-R.com. That's the other big blogging platform. We're going to compare and contrast it now. Let's go to tumblr.com. Now, this is a this is a this is still a blog, but it's very different in character and content. And you may decide Tumblr is going to be the better blog for me than WordPress. WordPress is very cool and powerful in that it, it can focus on just creating a blog or it can focus on creating an e-commerce site or a full featured site. Tumblr really is much more focused on it, it almost skews toward it being a social network. So when you go to Tumblr you might see a different picture than me. That's fine. But it says create an account right away. Um, I'm gonna scroll down See, on the left side, you've got these dots here. I'm just scrolling down. Tumblr is so easy to use that it's hard to explain. We made it really, really simple for people to make a blog and put whatever they want on it. Stories, photos, GIFs, TV shows, etc., etc., etc. Tumblr is 254 million different blogs filled with literally whatever. So on Tumblr, you can share pictures and sounds and links and quips and all of that. Sounds <laughs> kind of like a social network. If I go further, next area here, Tumblr is blogs. Mm -hmm. Tumblr is what is what it turns out that when you make it easy to create interesting things, that's exactly what people do. All those great random blogs your friends send you, those are Tumblr blogs. We'll help you find and follow blogs like that, and we'll help other people find and follow yours. So Tumblr, if you've got an experience with Pinterest, will feel a little familiar. Pinterest is that great social network where you share a lot of pictures. Tumblr is very visual. WordPress, let's contrast it then. WordPress is a little bit more about the text. And Tumblr is a little bit more about the visuals. So here on these notes that I will give you a little bit later. WordPress. Tumblr. So you could not use Tumblr, right? <clears throat> if you have your own domain? That's a little bit of a technical question, but the short answer is you can use Tumblr if you have your own domain, but it's a technical implementation to do so. We've got Tumblr and WordPress. I would say, it's going to keep distracting me, so right here, WordPress. Um, first, I'm going to say I would call it the long-form blog, and Tumblr is the short-form blog. Tumblr. Uh, WordPress is where I'm going to write the 100-word blog, the 500-word blog, the 1,000-word blog. Tumblr is where I'm going to write one sentence, but put in a, an amazing picture, or sound, or video. WordPress is where I'm, where I'm going to write 500 words and a picture, but focus on the text. Yes. Can you also add video and audio or whatever? 
to the tem uh, word press, like the camel template? You can. Okay. You can, although the focus is a bit more on the on the text. But any multimedia, you can add to WordPress. Yes? How does Tumblr differ from Instagram? Instagram only works as an app on your mobile device. Oh, okay. Tumblr, you can use it on a web, on your computer, or your mobile device. And um, there's um, the only thing you can share on on Instagram are pictures and short videos. Mm -hmm. On Tumblr, you can share pictures, short videos, long videos, quotes, links, sound files. Can all these things be streamlined? Because I feel like we like, had to post a movie different times. Is there a way to just kind of make one post and it goes like a hundred different things? Mm -hmm. oh, are we going to talk about that next time? Oh, great. Mm -hmm. Focus on multimedia. So WordPress focuses on text. That doesn't mean you cannot put pictures and sound and so forth and links, but it's a focus on text. And Tumblr is a focus on multimedia. That doesn't mean you can't write 500 words on Tumblr. It just means you probably won't be read, because then that also gets to the long form and the short form of it. If I'm saying long form and short form blog, I'm also, in a say, in a sense, saying long attention span, short attention span. In the demographics in general, our word of WordPress are pretty much quote unquote everyone. Everyone um, can find every every kind of demographic every kind of target audience you can reach on WordPress, the culture and demographics of Tumblr are a bit more toward young. So if you're trying to reach a young audience, Tumblr might be better. You can still reach that young audience in WordPress, and WordPress is sort of the one-size-fits-all to some degree of finding an audience, but Tumblr is definitely about the young audience, as we saw from that hilarious ferret and uh, strobing colors and uh, celebrities and such. So if, uh, no, that's old. Um, young is um, for Tumblr. For Tumblr. No offense. For Tumblr. Um, I'm too old for Tumblr also. But um, yeah, young is, is going to be a bit more... You, I think you have to be at least 13 to use Tumblr. So like 13, 13 to 29. That's, I believe that's the youngest you have to be for Tumblr 13. So I have to look it up, but I, I feel that probably 13, maybe 16. In any event, you know, 10-year-olds shouldn't be using Tumblr. 8-year-olds shouldn't be using Tumblr. 13-year-olds shouldn't be using Tumblr. So but I think it might be 13 or 16, yes. Are the, the posts restricted at all, being that it is um, children are allowed on it? The hard part about restricting content online is that people can lie. Mm -hmm. So even if we restrict our content to 21 and up, someone can create an account and say, yeah, I'm 21 and up. I was born in 1980. And so it's hard to restrict. So I have to look up exactly, but I'm going to say 13 to 30. Sure. Um, I'm not saying that you will not reach an audience that is outside of this range, but the demographics and the statistics show that this is the that this is the range and probably a bit more like 25 but 30 and still related to to long form and such um, more permanent Tumblr is transitory. In, in line more to a social network. You tweet something on Twitter and then it's gone. It's still there, but you know, there's new tweets to look at. You post something on Facebook, someone looks at it, it's gone. There's something new to look at today. You post something on Tumblr, it's gone because there's something new to look at. It's still there, but they have to scroll back and such. And yes, on WordPress you still have next page, previous page, and all of that. But if you're posting once a month, you know, you're going to have 12 posts in one year. If you're posting once a week, you're going to have 52 posts. If you're posting on Tumblr, 
it's very easy to post three things in one day. And so it's very transitory. And the, and the demographics of the people that are using Tumblr are more about what's next, what's next. That's nice, but what's next? So that's why short attention span, short form, transitory. on WordPress you've got um, you can have e-commerce features on Tumblr cannot have e-commerce features so you can't sell your product on your Tumblr blog on your WordPress you can Mm -hmm. That's the way around it. Let's say I'm selling products on Etsy or eBay or Amazon. Well, I would just have links from my Tumblr to my real shopping site. But on WordPress, it can be all integrated together. One screen is your blog, the other screen is your shopping cart. On Tumblr, you can't have your shopping cart in your Tumblr site. It's got to be elsewhere. Maybe a WordPress site. Yes. Tumblr, you have a profile with Instagram? Yes. Mm -hmm. You have a profile and... and you will see that it's got a, a lot of a style of like a social network. You can easily comment and like and share and have profiles and messaging and so forth. WordPress has a basic aspect of social media, but it's really much more focused on the blogging. And those are some things there then for contrast. So then you may decide, actually, the audience I'm trying to reach will... Uh, I will really find them more on Tumblr. That's why this class we're going to talk about both. We're going to focus a little bit more on WordPress, but we will have a day that we talk about Tumblr. And what we learn about posting effectively to WordPress, we can apply it to Tumblr with some variation. Oh, I was also going to say usually on WordPress because it's long form and such, you know, um, a goal there uh, on WordPress starting off would be post at least once per month and on Tumblr post at least once per day that's a big goal obviously so we can actually say once per week to start off um, because you're going to see sort of like Facebook and Twitter and so forth um, it's very easy and enticing because you've got your Facebook on your phone, perhaps, you snap that nice photo, put it on Facebook. And then a couple of hours later, oh, there's another nice thing to share. Put it on Facebook. So that's how Tumblr is. It's got an app. You can have your Tumblr app on your phone. You can think of a great idea, uh, a, a nice missive, and then post it on Tumblr and move on. And then you think of another idea, a couple of hours later, you post it. You take a photo, uh, you record a quick video. It's very transitory, short attention span. You're going to post to it. Regarding your company, let's say I've got, uh, I often use in my classes this fictional company, Victor's Bakery. So I've got this bakery. I'm, I'm one of the, the bakers in, in my bakery, let's say. And so I'm there all day long baking. It's, it's no problem for me to take a photo of the tray of raw dough, post it. When it's done 45 minutes later, take another photo of it and post it again. Then I'm building that sort of story about the process of my day. Let's say then, uh, you know, I take a photo of everyone inside of the, well, I take a short video of everyone that visited the bakery that day. People saying hi and stuff. Share that. So short attention span content to get me followers on Tumblr. And then, of course, having links there, visit us on Main Street. Today only, sale. Here's a coupon. Follow us on Tumblr. So all of these blogs then existing to get me traffic back to my to my shop to sell them that cupcake, um, whatever it means necessary. WordPress, Tumblr, Twitter, etc. Yes. For um, to make a list of the five kind of posts for blogging, mm -hmm. would those say what would apply? So Tumblr is just like a quick in the moment picture and a sentence or two. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Another question. Well, uh, let me let me finish that answer there because as we'll see examples of Tumblr blog posts they still sort of piggyback on their main website because they can have a Tumblr account 
and have a, a preview, have one sentence and a picture. Read more. Read more takes me back to the main website where they read the 500 words. So in another sense, that's how Tumblr is again like a social network. Maybe just preview content on Tumblr to drive traffic elsewhere. Well, they're both a form of advertising, but much more obvious on Tumblr. And uh, your question here? Okay. So what you were saying is for example, your video. Mm -hmm. I took a class once that said, and this was years ago, that whenever you post, or not post, whenever you do stuff like that, you have to get a release form from everybody who's in that video in order to be able to post it. Is that true now? Has blogs changed? Technically, it is true, okay. and it really depends on the person, how uh, protective they are, they are of their image and how litigious and such. One way around that, like for example, these this restaurant that I work with, um, they have you know the travel cha channel come and record, and they've got you know food, TV, and such. What they do is at the door, there's a there's a sign here that says, "Be advised, travel channel is recording today. Your image and likeness will be used. If you do not agree to this, please do not enter." Okay. So you can put that up, and then. That's not like the most ironclad protection, but that's enough protection to say like, why did you record me? And you say, you came into the restaurant and you agreed to walking in. Some people will still say, I'm taking you to court. Right. Okay, we're going to court. But there is at least that starting point to say, from your point of view, why you are okay to do that. So yes, technically, you would. I would have to ask everyone here, please sign this release. If I put that sign up there, enough people are going to accept that, that I'm going to be safe. And a couple of people, probably not. And then we have to deal with that. But nowadays, uh, there is much more of this culture of, where's my 15 minutes of fame? So some people will like to be, hey, look, I came out on that tweet from the, from the restaurant. And some people will say, don't put me online. I value my privacy. So it really is on an individual basis. OK, uh, I forgot to post this. Yes? If I'm in a public place and someone takes my picture, and I'm in the background, they can use it. They could, yeah. That's a in variety of, in a exactly in a public place. There's a bunch of issues regarding privacy and such. But if I'm taking a photo out on the street corner, there's less privacy than if we are in a classroom or in a, inside of a business. It's a big can of worms. But if you're outside in public, do you have any sites or tools or anything we could go to to actually expand our knowledge on the copyright issues, like or? So, for example, let's say I'm reposting a recipe that I really like, and I might be giving credit to the person, but still I'm reposting something they wrote, and the laws around that, you know, all that ambiguity. Is there? Unfortunately, I, I don't have that and I'm and I can only give experiences in what we've done with clients but we can we can look those up and, and if maybe there's any volunteer that can look that up basically there's plenty of sites out there and you know the US trademark office and all of that to, to find this stuff out. Now, I had a file that I was going to give you but I forgot to copy it so just one moment I'm going to give you this file that has examples of some nice Tumblr blogs because we're just looking at the Tumblr home page and maybe getting a general idea about what does it actually look like. Uh, I'll give you some examples in a moment as soon as I get this. But uh, as we scroll down a little bit more here it says you're able to post text and photos and quotes and links and that gets us to that issue of copyrights. One short answer about that is depending on the content that you're sharing it may be totally fine and not quite copyright problematic because we in a sense are giving free publicity to who we're linking to. People want that for publicity. If I'm resharing someone else's recipe, if they put it out in public, they probably want it to be public. If they didn't put it in public, they don't want it to be public. Maybe there is a message down here that says do not repost. So that's a good indicator that means do not repost. It's such a gray area, this whole technology world that it really is sometimes on a case-by-case -case basis but we can find various resources online to help us navigate those minefields. Let me just pull this up here. Sorry, I thought I had it handy. Is there such a thing as asking for permission in the post? 
You could. Definitely, you can contact the, the creators and ask them. But there's that saying, it's easier to ask for permission, uh, forgiveness than permission. So af you can do it afterward and then ask, and that may or may not work out okay for you. Yeah. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to show you some examples of some Tumblr blogs, just to get a taste of what it's like. Uh, I've got this network folder where I can give you documents and such. I'll give you the notes that I've been writing all day in a little while when I'm done with them. The network folder, if you minimize all of your windows, so you can do that quickly by clicking on the bottom right corner, all the way on the bottom right corner of your screen, that will minimize all your windows quickly. So minimize everything. So we go look at the desktop here. Your desktop looks different, but there's a desktop, and on the top you've got the computer icon. Double-click computer on the top left. You'll see various drives, and one of them is in a section called Network Location. So this is a network folder where I can give you things. So you'll find Network Location, Classroom Data, Drive Z, as in Zebra. Double-click that, Classroom Data. You'll see a bunch of folders from different classes. It's alphabetical. Let's scroll down to find Campos, C-A-M-P-O-S, Campos Blogging. Open that up, and what I've got in there for you is the PDF of the syllabus. So if you want a PDF version of the syllabus, it's there. And also a, a document called Tumblr Links. You want to select those and drag them to your desktop. Don't so just double-click them. That's going to prevent other people from viewing it, perhaps. So you want to select both of these and drag them to your desktop. Then when you have a copy on your desktop, double-click the Campos blog Tumblr links file. Just take a moment to do that. If you needed a little help, call me over. All right, so did everyone get that? All right, so if you open the Campos Blogging Links Tumblr, here's going. This is going to show us a few, um, a few links. Blogging nine, nine things brands should consider. The bloggers meal plan. The Mo's blog. This is going. We're going to look at these links a little bit later because again, we're going to get writer's block probably eventually. So these things here will help us deal with that. We'll look at those later. But then I've got Tumblr links. I've got tips. From Tumblr, these are directly from the Tumblr site. A brief guide to Tumblr's new tools, which might not be quite relevant if you're brand new to Tumblr, but there's that. And then here's some ex some Tumblr websites we can look at. One thing before we do that, we've got okay, Rolling Stone. Notice the address: RollingStone.tumblr.com. Entertainment Weekly: EntertainmentWeekly.tumblr.com. T Magazine. They all end with .tumblr.com. That's one thing we'll write in our notes the WordPress usually is self-hosted <coughs> and then Tumblr is usually I suppose not self-hosted what that means is I'll write it here I'm gonna have victorsbakery.com but on Tumblr I'm gonna have victorsbakery.tumblr.com uh, the default is that we are going to claim our name in the Tumblr website 
we are going to create our Tumblr site, our Tumblog, um, on the Tumblr server. So therefore, it's not self-hosted. Self-hosted means we ourselves will have our site on our own server. And that's a technical thing that we will talk about. That basically means getting an account, for example, uh, so purchasing, <coughs> hosting, like with Bluehost.com, GoDaddy.com, HostGator.com, and a ton of them out there in the world. So you're going to be purchasing hosting. You're going to be purchasing the server space to upload your WordPress posts to where you're uploading your pictures, your videos, whatever, you're, post you're purchasing the hosting. It's self-hosted. You're also purchasing the domain. And that just is the address, victorsbakery.com, uh, myamazingblog.org. You're purchasing hosting and domain. It's self-hosted. Usually your WordPress, you buy this stuff, and then you can have your WordPress your WordPress e-commerce site, your WordPress blog site, your WordPress business site, you're going to purchase that. In contrast with Tumblr, you're not going to purchase hosting. All your content will be uploaded to the tumblr.com site. You still, though, can purchase the domain. Only need to purchase, and this is optional, domain. So if you don't want victorsbakery.tumblr.com, you can get victorsbakery.com. You have to still buy that, victorsbakery.com. It's just that your WordPress site will be stored at the Tumblr hosting system, and that's free. Mm -hmm. How do you have two the same addresses? How can there be a victorsbakery.com? Website. It's a technical thing. Uh, that was a question someone else asked. It was a technical thing that we will get into, but it's in short the the victorsbakery.com is going to mask the victorsbakery.tumblr.com. So, oh, so it's technical, oh, and we'll get to it. But um, you're only going to if you need to. Victorsbakery.tumblr.com will be totally free. But if you want victorsbakery.com, you have to pay for that. And then there's some technical setup so that when someone types victorsbakery.com, it automatically goes to and masks victorsbakery.com. That's a little technical. This is technical too. We'll talk about it in, in detail as time goes on, but this is one of the, the big differences between the two. One is self-hosted and one is not self-hosted. Yes? Do you prefer any of those hosting sites? I mention these three because in my years of doing this, I've dealt with all of them. And I'm mentioning those because they work well and they have good prices. There's plenty of them of others out there that might be better or worse. But I know that I've dealt with those three and it works. On my personal site, I have GoDaddy, sort of just for inertia, because I've had GoDaddy since like literally the year 2001. Uh, so I've been paying them a lot of money this past decade and a half. Uh, but all three of them work great. Texcoco is hosted on Bluehost. Works perfectly. I've got other clients and they're on HostGator and other clients on GoDaddy. They all work great, these three big ones. There's going to be plenty of other ones out there. Uh, I don't have experience in all of them, but we can look at possible examples. Any of these three you should be fine with. Is that how you spell GoDaddy? GoDaddy. GoDaddy. Go GoDaddy. Okay, yeah. I just wanted to make sure of that. That's true because there might be a go to daddy. Out there. <coughs> go daddy. Um, so that's some technical stuff at the very end that we'll get to in more detail, but hopefully you're getting the idea. Let's actually look at some of these. If you, let's check out Rolling Stones Tumblr. Uh, I believe that says if you control click it. So on the keyboard, hold control and then click, and that should open it up in the web browser. If it, that doesn't work, copy that address and paste it to your web browser. On the keyboard at the bottom left, you've got control.
Okay, so Rolling Stone. Uh, what age range target market do you think they're going for? 21. Rolling Stone's been around since the 60s. 40, 50. I would say everyone that likes music. Everyone who likes a favorite style of music. You don't like Willie Nelson? All I'm saying is, do you think that hip hop people are looking at Rolling Stone? Yes. Really? Yeah. Rolling Stone also focuses, you're going to see stuff about Kanye West and, and everything. Maybe not as prominently, but um, yeah, supposedly. Uh, but anyway, um, so, okay, we've got a design. We've got the Rolling Stone logo up there, a couple of tied bars, perhaps, a central column here. And then um, this says this was posted today at 2.23. It's got a, a graphic, and what's very popular on, on Tumblr is an animated graphic. So a short looping graphic. And then we've got the headline of a longer article. Watch Casey Musgraves and Willie Nelson's hunting video for Are You Sure? Well, that's enticing. I want to click either on the picture or the link. And what that does is it then takes me to the address rollingstone.com. That's where then I can read the, the longer post and watch the full video. There was just a preview snippet of a video loop and then the full this seems to be about 300 words the full article here at 1 p.m. today last night Steven Tyler played countryfied Aerosmith hits in strip down NYC at a strip down <laughs> NYC gig read our review so a graphic oftentimes animated and a link and that link is going back to rollingstone.com. Etc. etc. So the style, here's one of the first non-animated pictures, but it's a picture nonetheless. Um, where a, it's sort of a preview, a tease of something longer. For many people, this will be good enough. They click it. They click like, for example, and they move on. Tumblr, as I said, is really blurring the lines between a blog and a social network because you're going to see the terminology of notes. A note could be a comment. It could be a, a like. So, for example, on any one of these, click where it says notes. This one's got 109 of them. And then it's going to take you to say, Daniel Lasaris Rex likes this. Dreams of Getty with a machete, reblog this. Ectoplasm 1 likes this. So you're going to see some that are likes, you're going to see some that are comments, you're going to see some that are reblogs, which is a share. That's their term for it. For example, um, Basomatic 70, Basomatic 76 um, liked this post enough that they copied it, they shared it, they reblogged it to their followers. Uh, so then you might ask, can they? Can you do that? Yes, this is the this is the point of the social networks and Tumblr and all of that, and even WordPress to some degree. This is helping Rolling Stone get more traffic. This is going to help you get more traffic, to have people share your stuff. A like is nice, but a sh a reblog or a share is better. What's also better is perhaps if they follow or subscribe to your blog. Then in a in a sense you're going to get some guaranteed traffic to your site. So 109 notes. This is 109 people that are that that have a Tumblr account, that have a Tumblr blog. They may not be very active in posting stuff. They may simply have a Tumblr account account to follow and comment on other people's posts. That's fine. You can do that as well. You can create a Tumblr account when we do one later just to to follow, just to comment, just to like. You don't have to be using it to post, but if you are posting content, you are going to reach an audience that you might be trying to reach. Here's a comment here. We blog this and added a comment. I ask everyone about this movie, seeing Dan Aykroyd get down to the dead Kennedys is just surreal. So comments, likes, reblogs, or shares, like a social network. 
So that's one example. Back to the links here, let's look at Entertainment Weekly. Go back to that document. It should be back down here on the taskbar. Go back to it and open up Entertainment Weekly. Okay, different kind of style. There's a left sidebar and a central one. It doesn't seem to have a right one like Rolling Stone did. There's a background uh, picture instead of just a color. There's a central content area. Your favorite Sons of Anarchy characters might be returning for Mayan's spin-off. So the photo. This one has something <coughs> more obvious that I, that I didn't see with Rolling Stone, which is here, tags, keywords, tags that help your blogs get found. WordPress has tags also, and Tumblr has tags also. But if I were to click on the tag Sons of Anarchy, it would show me everything on Tumblr with that tag. So we'll talk about tagging our content to get found. But in this particular theme, on Tumblr, it's more obvious than on uh, Rolling Stone. Yes? Some, there, just like WordPress, there are many free themes and there are many premium themes where you pay for. Tumblr uh, is like that as well. You can get a variety of free themes and there's also some themes that are going to be paid for. But you will be able to change the content or the look of your site pretty easily. When, when we get to that. So what else here? Okay, this first one up here was 18 hours ago. This next one was two days ago. So another graphic, hashtags, or uh, just uh, keywords. Uh, pictures, often animated. The time that the rock saved those puppies from a pool. Did you hear that about that? So the rock saved a couple of puppies that were actually trapped in a pool. So he's a real-life hero. Uh, pictures. So uh, on here I'm seeing a lot of pictures and I can click on some of these as links. And um, that'll take me back to entertainmentweekly.com. So in a sense, we're seeing that these particular two that I've shown so far are using Tumblr as a way to drive traffic to their main site. We'll see other examples where they stay on the site, but they still have another site that they, that they drive traffic to because you cannot sell a product on Tumblr. You cannot sign up people for your nonprofit organization on Tumblr. You cannot get people to request a quote from you on Tumblr. You can on your main site, on a WordPress site, so Tumblr is more about driving traffic than actually a place to complete your ultimate goal. My ultimate goal of Victor's Bakery is to sell more cupcakes. I'm going to entice people to do that on Tumblr, to visit my website, to order now. Or I'm going to entice people on Tumblr, visit the store this weekend, and show this coupon on your Tumblr to get 10% off. The One of the goals of Entertainment Weekly is to sell subscriptions. They still publish that magazine. Some people still buy it. So you can get a subscription here. You can get, I believe, the online subscription, so you'll get more access to more articles. But basically, look at the very first thing at the top. Subscribe to, subscribe to Entertainment Weekly. So the goal of this website is to sell subscriptions, one of the goals. The other goal is for people to click on some of these ads and stuff and they get revenue. You can't do that on <coughs> Tumblr. So there are no ads on Tumblr? There are ads. You're, you still are going to see them. And it's going to depend on the, it's going to depend on the theme and such. But um, I, I see other items here, but they're 
more f to promote themselves. But uh, you will you will come across ads. All the websites nowadays, unfortunately, all the social networks are starting to incorporate ads because they're seeing that the best way to make money online is to do advertising. Back to the links. Uh, let me skip down to this one. This one's interesting. Um, number six, awesome people hanging out together. .com. So open up that one. Open up number six. The Rolling Stones site and the Entertainment Weekly site, their ultimate goal basically is to sell you subscriptions. The ultimate goal of this one is maybe just for fun. To, to create something interesting online. To... Uh, create a persona, something fun. So here we have John Wayne and Marlene and Dietrich hanging out together. Orson Welles and Charlie Chaplin. Harvey Milk and Jane Fonda. David Bowie Iggy Pop in Moscow, 1976, etc. So the purpose of this one is just to show pictures of famous people, of awesome people hanging out. Mick Jagger and Andy Warhol, Susan Sarandon and David Bowie, John Wayne, Gary Cooper, etc. So, what's the purpose of this site? It's to share something interesting and creative. And that's another relevant thing that you can do. And so here we've got random, so we can have menu items like a website random, about, full list, submit, ask, archive. There could have been also a link, shop now. So that would probably go over to an Etsy store, let's say. Okay, so we're seeing uh, this style right here is all about the graphics. This kind of layout in my case has two columns, just a graphic and a caption, and that's it. I believe you can still click on them and then it'll show you, you know, the larger picture and maybe other items like people's comments and such. This particular blog I'm showing you as an example of like kind of the opposite. Usually we're working on blogs and trying to generate traffic and such for a goal of selling something, getting subscribers, and, and so forth. This one just seems to be, you know, for the fun of it, to show something interesting and, and um, to maybe start discussion and not really to sell you on anything. So you can look at the other ones yourself, uh, and there's a spot there for the people that had the question about, I've got a domain name and I don't want it to say victor.tumblr.com, there's, there's instructions there on how to, how to do that. We'll, we'll look at it briefly, but it is technical. So th these are, we're spending some time here to, um, to talk about Tumblr, and you might be deciding, no, this is not for me. That's fine. We're gonna, this is a four-week class. One day is going to be theory today. Two days are going to be WordPress. Remember, this is all on the syllabus. And the fourth day is going to be on Tumblr. So maybe you decide, well, Tumblr's not for me. Three days is enough. That's fine. Maybe you come and then you do learn the Tumblr stuff and you decide, actually, maybe this might work for me. It's going gonna, it's gonna to reach my audience. Maybe you learn all of this and decide, well, I'm going to focus on WordPress and once in a while I'll put something on Tumblr. Couldn't hurt. The more traffic you get from different sources, the better. That's why, yes, you want to have a website, but you want to get on social media. 
And yes, that does mean get on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and Tumblr and uh, Periscope and Google Plus, etc., etc., etc. Yes, much more work to do, but that's why a social media marketing job is a full-time job. But at the very least, you've got your website and at least one social network, maybe Facebook. And that's where you're getting traffic, you're building your SEO, you're building your authority and content, and you're getting traffic to your site. And we'll talk about streamlining it so that I post something on one network and it goes to the others. Specifically, we can post on WordPress or Tumblr and that'll automatically go to Twitter and Facebook. Or I can post on Tumblr and that'll automatically go to WordPress and vice versa. So there are ways to do this a little bit quicker than sitting at a computer for five hours and making sure I post it everywhere. It will tie together to some degree. So we'll take our second break. When we come back, we'll do our third activity, which is the brainstorming aspect. So it's uh, noon. Let's take a 10-minute break. We'll be back at 12.10. Do a little bit of that and a little lab time, and then before you know it, the day is over. So we'll be back at 12.10.